to the Knitting Samurai and Her Guys. This is episode 119. I'm your host, Steph, and it is a snowy Thursday here in New Jersey. <laughs> so this is um, titled On the Road. This is a more of a travel log slash knitting podcast. Um, it'll involve quite a bit of editing for you. And if you're new to the show, this is not what it's typically like. And if you're a returning viewer, I hope you enjoy a little bit of a change in scenery, a change in pace. So, how's everybody doing? I know it hasn't been that long since we recorded, but I am traveling for work for three nights, four days. And I thought I cannot let this much free time in the evenings go to waste. So I have to sit down and talk to my knit peeps and <laughs> just catch up a little bit, you know? So um, let's see, let me fill you in on what's going on with the boys, or should I save that to the end? I don't know. Okay, so there'll be a little bit of knitting because I'm limited what, by what I can fit in my carry-on. So there'll be a little bit of knitting, some prize drawings, some general chatter from me, some footage of the giant snowstorm that's got us in a state of emergency, and I think that's it right and maybe some uh, some boy footage at the end and definitely some chatter so there's a rundown of what's coming your way so let's start off with the uh, short sleeve sweater slash Miranda cow knit along that ran for the month of February and I think the first half of January January 14th I, I, I honestly don't remember, but I am so excited that there were 15 completed sweaters that came out of this knit along. That's amazing to me. Adult size, or almost one was a, a child, but close enough. Not like a baby sweater, you know? So, real full sweaters. Knit, finished, photographed, up. I'm just thrilled. So, thank you all so very, very much for participating. Um, a knit along sort of feels like putting myself out there, you know, hey, you want to do this with me? And I know people watch, but it's always nice to have people engage and get, get involved and, and to see their progress and what you guys are doing on that side, because I know what I'm doing on this side. <laughs> so um, we finished that. I drew names for the prizes and I took pictures of the prizes because I didn't want to package them up and bring them with me. So uh, the first prize is a bag knit by Allison, knit by Allison. No, it was not knit, it was sewn by Allison. It's this great project bag here. I'll give you a visual. I'm gonna show you a picture too, but it's about yay wide, but yay high, okay. <laughs> and the winner of that is number two, Lenoise. <laughs> so that's Danny from Georgia. I think Danny, you've won before. I'm not sure. But um, she knit a great Miranda sweater. She was our first completed, or first one to post over in the, on the thread. So that was exciting. And the second uh, prize is a pattern from Rebecca. Oh, gosh. I, I remember everybody by their picture and their name, so I know it's Rebecca, but I think it's Rebecca CJ or Rebecca 9J. I'm not sure I'm sorry <laughs> but she generously offered to um, gift a pattern of the recipients choosing I'm gonna say a seven dollar value six dollar value I'm not sure I'll put it in the uh, in the scroll across the bottom what the pattern value is but the winner for that wonderful prize as I drop a stitch and flip it around and try and get my Okay, there we go. The winner for that was number nine, and that is Boo Sully, <laughs> Anita from Farnham. I think that's UK, uh, if I remember right. So she, it's a fun story there, she um, was not having a good time with the Miranda. Knit quite a bit of it, ripped it out, knit a completely different long sleeve sweater, and finished it well before the rest of us and I was like go ahead post it in the group like I'm sorry you had such a headache with the Miranda so I'm glad to see her win something so um Anita why don't you get in contact with me and then I'll let Rebecca know that you're the winner of the prize and thank you so much Rebecca very sweet of you and then the third and final prize is for a skein of Knit Picks Chroma in a beautiful pink purple gray 
slow colored gradient yarn. Picture of that here. And the winner of that was number 11, Calico, Calico Kitty. That is Deb from Rhode Island. She was the last? No, she wasn't the last one. I don't know when she put her picture in, but I think she did a white one. So it was so cool because I think two of us did like this teal color. There were a couple white ones. I love seeing all the colors. And it's different to go and look at finished projects versus like, on a project page for a pattern. It's different to go look at finished projects versus, hey, I heard her talk about this and I know what all the challenges she went through to get this done. It's just so much more exciting. So I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did and I hope we can do more knit now. In the so, should we talk about some knitting, some current knitting, now that our sweaters are all done? And did I tell you that I wore mine? Yeah, I wore it um, all day, a couple, I must have been two weeks ago on a Sunday. I wore my Miranda. I had a lot of reservations about it. Just wore it around the house. It was super comfy, cozy, warm. Um, it, it was good. It was better than I thought it would be. So it'll be a good house sweater, for sure. So that's good. It's not all negative. So then, after I finished the Miranda, as you will recall, or if you're new, maybe you don't know, I uh, jumped from that onto finisher frog it and finished up my gray sweater and so that fell off my needles two sweaters already for this year I need to weave in my ends and get buttons for that but um, yes yeah, so that one's done and I immediately cast on on February 28th right because that was when the day I finished the um, the grace sweater I cast on for the stoker so you've heard me talking about this and now you're going to see some action. This is a beautiful Color Works pullover by Isolde Teague. And here's a picture of it. I'm doing mine in uh, Pattern Works. Sorry, but my notes are over there. So I'm going to look and read this part to you. Pattern Works Brenton Heathers in the Forest Green colorway. And I've knit a sweater with this before, and if I could have put it in the carry-on, I would have brought it next time. I'll show it to you, I promise. I knit a baby sweater for Row, 18 months, two year size sweater. And um, I knit that on size sixes, so I thought, okay, size sixes on this. Let me tell you, this sweater starts, so I've, I've got quite a bit, right? I'm traveling, there's plenty of time to knit in planes, cars, um, in the hotel room, quietly in the evening. It's funny how much later you can stay up when you get to sleep until 7, 7.30. You're not completely exhausted from answering questions and, you know, making decisions and pushing little people to take tubs and brush teeth and read stories. And it's just a lot less mentally taxing. I've stayed up until 10.30, 11 o'clock both nights and been just fine. <laughs> so normally, uh, and for comparison's sake, the two nights before, I left, I think I was in bed asleep by 9 o'clock both nights. So, um, yeah. But anyway, so it is March 5th, so I've been knitting on this for five days, and presto, magic, look at this. I have um, six inches finished on the body, and then seven and a half inches on one sleeve. And are you looking at this and thinking it looks really small? So am I. <laughs> oh, Stephanie. So, um, I wanted, first let me just explain that I wanted to have two separate projects on the needles, so the stockinette is in the round for miles and miles and miles, can be rather tedious and um, I can get into that zone where my eyes just glaze over and I fall asleep. <laughs> and I, it's also not as portable as a single sleeve, which is... Um, a little more complicated in that there are increases going on as I work my way up the sleeve, but at the same time it's a small project so I can knit it in a restaurant under the table. It's fine. So this is my sleeve on my stoker on sixes, 4.5 millimeter needles, not so sure if I said that. And I'm having a heck of a time measuring gauge. So I measured it once and thought I got it. I measured it a second time, I thought I was one stitch off on my length called your row yeah my row gauge and so then I was like okay I need to tweak a little bit and where she says do 18 rows I'll add 
two more rows to make sure I get it and then this morning I measured it and I'm measuring different places I'm measuring on flat surfaces I think it's just the darkness of the yarn that's making it really really hard to tell so this is our super fitted sleeve if it's to gauge right so I'm kind of thinking maybe I'm not to gauge so I'll go more off um, I've reverse engineered some of her like do so many rows based on the gauge that she used to write the pattern and reverse that into what the inches should be at that point and then do something so I think I'm gonna go that route what else to tell you I'm not gonna rip back I'm, I'm not I'm just gonna go with it I know I know you're sitting over there going we know what's gonna happen this sweater is not gonna fit you and it probably won't because look at this I know it's scrunched up on a 32 circumference needle but uh, oh gosh there's yarn and uh, stuff everywhere but I keep taking it and tugging and even if I do that like this is made out of bacon so once I pulled it all the way as far as I could pull it and then I got about 45 inches which is what I need for my bottom hip measurement so maybe it'll be good I don't know. I'm gonna omit the waist decreases up to the waist and then um the bust i need a little bigger so i'm going to add a few more in increases in there so whatever whatever i am going to just send it up into the universe and if it works it works and if it doesn't well maybe by next fall i'll have dropped a few pounds around the middle you know because i still am 10 pounds up from when i Became, first became pregnant with Tristan. So there's an extra 10 pounds hanging on there. Maybe that's an inch around the middle. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I think they say 15 pounds is a size. So that it, see, I could be just fine. It could be huge. It's a 70% superwash yarn. This The superwash could stretch. I'm thinking I'm gonna knit the body of it an extra inch just so I have it so I could do some aggressive blocking and still have a decent length sweater. I don't know. <laughs> you know, you spend all this time knitting because you want to accumulate knowledge and you love learning new things. Don't tell me you don't. That's why you knit. That's why you watch podcasts. You like to learn new things. You want to see what the new book is, what the new pattern, the new um, style technique that we're all learning, that we're all excited about. You know, that's why we started on socks and we moved into our shawls and now we're all doing project sweater chest although I'm not into it but I would I'm I for some reason really want to knit sweaters right now so some of that's rubbing off on me obviously um you know so we're all here because we want to learn new things and grow and so <laughs> it sort of flies in the face of logic to just say yeah the math doesn't add up if it's actually if I actually got 4.5 stitches to the inch I'm making a sweater eight inches too small for me but I'm gonna keep going you know hours and hours of knitting but I'm gonna keep going because I've already put so much into it so there will be some irony and some wry smiles later on I know because I'll be disappointed or I will block it and everything will be perfect and I will be dancing on the ceiling so <laughs> come back later to find out which way it ends up because it could go either way as far as I'm concerned but for now I'm really enjoying working with this yarn it has I think 5% alpaca content yeah just 5% 25% nylon has a great hand feel super soft um, I'm a, I've considered <laughs> how fitted the sleeve is and I'm thinking well I'll just make it go a little longer oh lay yeah longer down on my arm so that it gets a little more loose in through here and I could add some extra increases but I, I don't want to I just want to let it go and be what it is but for the yeah I'm not gonna be able to wear without a shirt underneath that's what I was thinking I was like, well maybe I'll just wear a short sleeve or a tank top underneath if it's too fitted but I have some very fitted um, long sleeve shirts that I'll put on any and if it works it works right right so let's just go with that. <laughs> you want to be crazy with me? You want to cast on a sweater that you're like, well, my gauge is somewhere between <laughs> 25 and 32 stitches to the inch, somewhere in there, depending on how hard I pull. But I do like the way the fabric comes out. And even if I pull a little bit more, it's, it's going to be fine. Can you tell by how long I'm ranting about this that I'm trying to convince us both? Yeah. 
<laughs> oh boy. So that's on the needles. More to come on that. So I have to knit another four inches on the body before five inches on the body before I do anything fun. So we'll see how how that goes. And then I am also working on or also came traveling along with me to New Jersey. Um, the movie theater socks that I had cast on before. So this is the second one. That's how far along that one is. And this is the first one. Clearly they are not at the same spot. So about there. Um, nothing much to add except to say that I like them. This is Patton's Croy in the Celestial Stripes colorway. I'm knitting them on US zeros. Two millimeter needles. Two by two rib. Wendy Johnson slip stitch heel, basic heel, pattern I love most of all for all of my socks. Although, hadn't I said I was gonna do this as a uh, fish lips kiss? I think I did. I think that's that's where my brain was headed with these. But yeah, they're good. They're a small project bag to carry around. But I'm basically carrying both of them around. So, and I think that's it for knitting. So if you you're you're done with me, you're done with me. <laughs> So I've mentioned a little bit about my job in the past and as part of it this week um, we've traveled to a group of five of us have traveled to New Jersey because um, depending on how much outlet shopping or mall shopping you do you may notice that several slash 12 times a year or 10, 10 times a year the stores flip over where things are housed within the store and they change what is displayed in the front windows based on the season, what the new product is and whatnot. And so we're trying an innovative new way to do this and a bunch of us got together, put our heads together, how are we gonna do this? And we hopped on a plane and long story short, here we are in New Jersey. We spent two days in one store, it looks awesome. And now we're gonna go to a second store and um, well, we were. We're not going to now but the plan was to go to a second store and work it through with them and just you know fine-tune it before rolling it out to the rest of the stores um i do work for a large brand retailer i don't know how to say that without saying whatever okay uh, <laughs> if that doesn't mean anything to you maybe it doesn't matter so i in my personal life i do most of my shopping online, I avoid going to stores as much as I can, but then at work, I work with what we call brick and mortar stores <laughs> versus e-commerce stores, and um, I work on the apparel side of it. So yeah, it's been a fun getaway as much as it could be. On Tuesday morning, I was up at 3 a.m. on a plane or in a car driving to Boston on a plane, and we were here for here in New Jersey for 8.30 in the store and we worked in straight through until 7 o'clock that night and took 45 minutes for lunch at the food court. I was so dead. I was so dead tired. <laughs> I can't even tell you. Like, I sit at the desk. My feet were just feet and my back. Oh, But um, they feed us well and put us up in decent places. I'm in Radisson today and so now Fast forward to today, uh, Wednesday was a very similar long day like that, minus the plane ride. And uh, last night we went out for dinner at the Cheesecake Factory. And afterwards, oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> side note, you can't bring more than four ounces through uh, TSA. Yeah, and uh, my beloved boss, had, who flies, oh, I want to say 20 trips a year like she's always flying she is for work for home she's mostly for work though she flies a lot had told me I could bring eight ounces so I bring my shampoo and my conditioner and my styling gel and my spray gel because this hair doesn't look like this curly without a lot of help so TSA took them all from me because we carried on because it's a small group and everybody that's what you do there's peer pressure you have to carry on it's only two projects. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I made it through the second day. So last night we were at the Cheesecake Factory at this big mall, Freehold Mall. And um, I think that's the name of it, something like that. 
and she my boss also lost a few things because apparently she rewrote the rules in her mind or I, I'm not sure what happened so we ended up going into an ultra store have you ever been in one of these makeup stores I mean come on I am not a makeup person so I've never been in one and there's one 10 miles from my house but I've never been to one so we go in there oh my god do you know how many hair care products they have I don't wear a lot of makeup but I love to try hair products. So I we spent a good hour just up and down the aisles in there. I bought, I kid you not, 10 different two to three ounce bottles of different shampoos and curling sprays and texturizers and conditioners. It was just so much fun. <laughs> that was the high point of my uh, last week since I talked to you last, right? It's Thursday now. I think I spoke with you on Thursday last week. So yeah, wandering around in a hair slash makeup store. <laughs> that was last night. And then this morning we, we knew the storm was coming, but the mall is closed. It's a state of emergency. So we're all trapped here at the hotel. We've got our computers. Everybody's working, meeting up for breakfast and lunch, but <laughs> I feel a little bit guilty that um, mom is taking Roland and Steve is taking care. He took the week off to take care of Tristan and just be available in case the boys were sick slash play video games and enjoy himself while I'm gone. Not that he couldn't do that with me there, but it just seemed easier. One less thing to worry about, right? He has a pretty stressful job and to just say, okay, you guys, I'm only going to work from home for an hour every day. <laughs> answer emails and that's it I'm taking the time off so he's home doing that and I'm I'm stuck in a hotel room with my computer and my podcast and um, the temperature set to 73 degrees so I'm nice and toasty it's a rough life <laughs> so that's what's happening with me yeah and what have I been watching so um, I've been watching my podcast of course this is a perfect opportunity to catch up on all of them because I've you know, 8 o'clock till, or 10, 11 o'clock at night, I'm in here by myself doing whatever I want. So, watching my podcast and doing my knitting thing, and, um, yeah, I've been doing that, The Big Bang Theory. I don't watch the show, I'm aware of it. Um, TBS has it, like, marathon every evening. So, I've just had that on for kind of background advice, but that's it. Well, that's about all I've got going on here. I'm trying to think, did we do anything this weekend? The boys went ice skating. Steve took Roland ice skating. And that's it. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to the flight home tomorrow. Hopefully we won't be too delayed. And if we are, um, if they cancel our flight, we've pretty much decided that we're going to turn the rental car into a one-way rental car and drive back to Boston, which will take us about five hours to do that trip. So Instead of spending the day jumping between, or not between, but going through security and airport and all that, we'll spend the day driving in the car together, the four of us. Because one of us is one home early. So, God of love work trips, right? I'm glad I don't take a lot of them. Steve goes on work trips a lot more than I do. So, it's nice to get away and I've slept really well. <sighs> yeah, getting to sleep in a little bit and not have one ear open. Huh? Those days are coming though. Those days are coming. Tristan's getting bigger by the second. So, and becoming a better sleeper by the second too. So, that's it for me for now, I think. I think, I think if I look at my notes, that's it. That's all I have. So, I hope you have a great 10 days or so until we speak again. And I'm looking forward to seeing how that sweater turns out. I hope you enjoy the mystery. <laughs> Take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. This is what's happening outside my window in Freehold, New Jersey, where I've come for work and so has the snow. And the purpose of this trip was to reset the store's apparel fixtures and then tell all the other stores what to do. But that's kind of hard to do when the store is closed. It's about one o'clock. Starting to go a little stir crazy. Went down to the restaurant and had lunch with one of my co-workers and now I'm back up in my room watching the plow truck so it doesn't look like too much snow I don't know I'm on the back side but been doing some work 
doing some knitting. There's my progress on uh, the sleeve of my stoker. You can see I'm um, going along. I'm sure I have more to say about it later. Uh, my view. There's a one car on the interstate. <laughs> I did see a car carrier truck go by carrying a, a quite a few mangled vehicles. So that's a little scary and it made me very thankful to be here. I'm backing up and giving you the breath of my view. Not bad, right? That's my little workstation. <laughs> I'm just chilling. I'm just chilling here. So that's what it looks like. That's what my day looks like today. Uh, the sunrise over the New Jersey Turnpike. The cars are back and running. And I am ready to go get on a plane and see my boys. What are you doing with those? Yeah.